everybody, welcome to another episode of Be Is For Build. Myself and Oscar are here, and uh, we, we, we don't have any of the builds to work on. There's no other, there's no other cars here. Uh, in today's episode, none of our cars made it home from LS Fest West. <laughs> The transport truck that was towing our vehicles back blew up early in Nevada. Really unfortunate engine failure and the truck is toast. We've spent the last few days trying to figure out how we could get that fully loaded trailer back here or rent another truck. And uh, I reached out to everybody on Instagram, the community. We did what we could and we couldn't find anything and we couldn't get ourselves unstuck. So I did the one thing I know how to do, which is buy salvage cars on auction and try and fix the problem. So in today's episode, I bought, what was it, 2005? 2005 Dodge Ram 3500 SD, which I don't know the difference between SD and HD, but I think we're gonna learn at auction. We're gonna go try and get it and get it ready to travel down to Nevada, pick up a 2000, sorry, 20,000 pound trailer full of our most prized builds and bring them back up here to Portland. Let's get down to it. Man, the shop is an absolute disaster area. <laughs> this is gonna take a while to clean up, but we will clean it. Anyways, Oscar, let's hit the bank. We need to get a uh, we need to get the bank to give us a check for a little over fourteen thousand dollars for this here new truck, and then we'll go look at our truck. Do, 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 do. That's why there's nobody in the parking lot. Looked a little empty. The branch is closed. Oh no. Gotta find another one. This is all the very calculated plan. Smooth start to this project. <laughs> all right, new bank, less bolt holes in this one. Got a cashier's check off to the uh, auction yard. Well, we're at the auction yard that will remain nameless because honestly, it's never really a pleasant time here. And that's why I don't do sponsored episodes for them anymore. But uh, got the truck paid for, got the title in hand. Ever since COVID, man, they uh, it's really gone downhill with the pickup process. So they're just basically like, yeah, the truck will come out at some point on a forklift and they'll drive in a circle. And if they don't see you or know where to go, then they drive it back and you don't get your truck today. And it's like, it could be between one and three hours. Good luck. And that's seriously the process that they do here. They think that that's acceptable. So if you wonder why I don't do sponsored episodes for any more auction companies, it's because, uh, the ones that we mainly use suck. So we're in a hurry. It'd be really nice to get lunch. We can't get lunch because we have to be watching the gate just in case. Well, fingers crossed we get our truck today. After a super minor and totally acceptable three and a half hour wait, ladies and gentlemen, I give you our Ram 3500. The first diesel on BS for Build. So far we bought a diesel boat, blew that up. Now we got a diesel truck. Let's hope things go better. Uh, Oscar opened one door, saw that there is power to the truck. What we really need to have happen right now is we gotta fire this thing up and drive it back to our shop. That's the hope. Oscar, do you wanna, let's take a look around and see if there's anything blocking us from being able to, you know, turn, stop, stuff like that. That does open because they opened it for the auction, so we might be able to do that. Everything's looking good steering wise and everything like that. Back's, back's looking really good. This generation for Dodge just didn't have the best luck for paint. Yeah, everything in the back end looks pretty good. Yeah, everything in the back looks good. Okay, we're just gonna jump in and try and fire it up. We just wanna get out of here. We haven't eaten all day. That weird harness thing down <laughs> What is that? Just a few, uh, few wires and what might be vacuum lines. I think that's like air brakes? All right, come on, baby, just fire up for us. Yeah, he's humming. And we got a fuel, full tank of diesel too. That's probably worth at least like two or three hundred bucks at this point. Hell yeah, which sounds really Dude, good. I'm excited for this now. Yeah, it's like we went from like being hungry and worried to like, nah, this is gonna be a good deal. Yeah. Good old McDonald's receipts in here. Dude, I will almost eat a McDonald's receipt at this point. I'm so hungry. <laughs> uh, looks like this is a four wheel drive rig. If it seems like I know nothing about this truck, that's it's not far from true. First of all, I'm not a diesel truck guy, right? I'm, I'm, I always learn when I get into new things, but also remember, 
you know, we had our, our truck driver's truck break down. We ran out of options as far as how we're gonna figure out to get our trailer, and this kind of idea popped up. I said, Oscar, do you wanna browse the auctions and see if we can find anything that works? It needs to be a, a dually, it needs to be diesel, it needs to be able to tow a certain amount of weight. And I was at the hospital doing my cancer treatments, and he sends me this link, and it says auction is today, which was yesterday for us. And I'm, no joke, while I'm getting like the needle put into my arm, to get the, the medicine shoved into my body. This thing was coming up on auction. I'm just on my phone inside the hospital. Boop, boop, bid, bid, win, and then we got it. So I did a little bit of background that I always do on standard things, but I'm unknowledgeable in this entire field. Uh, but it seems like so far with it running as well as it sounds and everything that we, it's gonna be hard to lose at this point. Um, we gotta get food. We gotta get out of here. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna camera this thing up before we go anywhere and, and we'll, oh my gosh, tell me we have power steering. I don't think we have power steering. Oh, really? That could be hard for a, oh, well, maybe because I'm in, no, in park you should still have power steering. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> we should pop and make sure we're not uh, missing think... a serpentine belt. Yeah, we're gonna have to pop the hood. I would imagine we'd have more lights if it was. Yeah, we have no check engine light or anything. Everything's looking really good. Can't be all daisies and butterflies. <laughs> Maybe that's what those lines go to, man. Maybe that's like some sort of a power steering. Wait, this is on off. It's still. <laughs> Just being wishful. We'll, we'll figure this out. Oscar, give it the release. The sweet, sweet release. All right, guys, I found the release. Looks like our... This apron might have a little bit of denting, which is moving the core support around, but let's see here. So, this is really bad. <laughs> this is an intercooler, though, not a radiator. That's good. So, it's interesting that it was idling so well. Um, with that being the case, well, let's look at power steering. I guess I could probably stand on this. There's belts on it. Oh, geez. Fell into the engine. Uh, yeah, there are things obstructing things down there. But all the belts are on this thing. It's really weird. It's a little sign that it's been uh, repainted. So, this might be double salvage. So I did not check the full history on it. We still haven't figured out why we wouldn't have power steering, but I think this is a better problem solved at the shop. First time driving a diesel. Gotta adjust my camera. Oh, and I have no power steering. Okay, that didn't work well. I have no power brakes. This is just dangerous now. I can't drive a truck that weighs this much without power brakes. I don't think, let me test here. Eh. Okay, I can stop a little bit. I'm gonna piss some people off in traffic because I ain't going too fast like this. At least it's already crashed, right? So if anything happens in front of me, I'm just going into the ditch. I'll just drive right into the ditch. All right, 20 feels safe. I'm gonna go back to the shop 20 miles an hour at a time. See you guys when I get there. I've created a traffic jam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars long. I'm gonna pull over here and uh, let everybody go by. It's the Christian thing to do. The rammer is in the building. All right, guys, we have to be very, very specific about what our game plan is here and what our goals are if we wanna have any shot at accomplishing these things. Today's Thursday, thanks to the auction yard, it's uh, f almost five o'clock, 5 p.m. in the day. I have to be on a flight Saturday at about four or 5 p.m. This flight was booked a long, long time ago. I absolutely cannot cancel it. The goal is to get this thing on the road so Steve, our driver, can drive it back down to Nevada, pick up his trailer, and drive it back here. So like we said, we had a few things that were problematic on the drive over. We have no power brakes. We have no power steering. That's a big one. We need to make sure that it has headlights, that it's road legal, new bumper replaced. There's a lot of stuff going on. Intercooler is a big one. Um, so we're gonna have to stay very focused, try not to get sidetracked on too many of the other repairs. The way that I'm looking at this build, this truck runs like a top as far as the engine is concerned. And it's a diesel, it's a great Cummins engine. So this is something that I wanna have on the channel for a long time, it's something I wanna use, but we're gonna have to do this in a two-stage approach. One first approach is gonna be what can we do to quickly get it on the road to go do its original job? Then we can order parts off of eBay, 
put all new parts on here, maybe give it a fresh coat of paint, and that'll be stage two, get a pretty nice truck. I've, even, I've definitely been thinking about facelift too, since almost everything is a little bit dented up. We could potentially facelift it, that might be fun. Um, but having a good Cummins powered diesel truck for towing would be really nice to take a lot of stress off of my Raptor and just means a lot of good things. But in this episode, we're going to be staying focused on basically shortcuts are accepted. Let's do what we can do to get it on the road so we can go get our builds. We have almost, we, it might even be, depending on who you does the estimate, a million dollars worth of cars on a trailer in Nevada. I want to get them home. So I think first thing that's gonna be best for us to do is a tear down to explore everything and we can do a better kind of diagnosis of the damage and what might be affecting those things like the brakes and the power steering. give you guys a quick update these fenders are designed in a very stupid way so you have to take everything else off first we got the bumper off we got the headlights out now i can finish taking off these fenders our core support our everything is is definitely like tweaked that away everything's tweaking out that way um so far the broken parts that we've seen broken headlight we got one of those on amazon it was able to be next day broken intercooler we found one of those about 30 miles away that we should be able to buy um, the window is broken we don't know that's a question mark but we could drive without one of those and i added something else to the list there's a power steering thing that oscar thinks that we're going to be looking into so we got to keep diving in going forward we're going to take off our uh this is our air conditioning condenser is what we're pretty sure it is it's definitely whatever it is it's been punctured it looks like ac condenser so we're going to go ahead and pull that and this is our intercooler that is for sure damaged and broken we're going to pull that off as well right now should help uncover a little bit more and if i can get the fenders off i want to get both those off too As it is a new day. Oscar and I uh, worked pretty late into the night last night getting things cleared out of here and we hit a, a pretty pretty uh, solid stopping point um, when we uncovered something that was a really big really big bummer that we had to definitely sleep on what we should do. Let me show you through this. So these are the frame rails and we're no stranger to you know bent up frame rails right it really depends where a frame rail is bent to see how catastrophic the problem is. Both of them are pointed uh, to passenger side that whole side is kinked in and everything. Um, so sometimes not a problem, right? But as we get back here, let's, we start kind of exploring underneath here and it's bent here. And this just pretty much only holds a sway bar and a steering add-on. So that's still not a problem. And then, but keep in mind to fix it, you have to be able to cut off the bent part and build something straight, either replacement frame or tube frame. The problem is it's all the way back here there is a buckling in the frame. I can't really show it to you because it's right on the other side that's next to the engine. The frame is buckled in here as it's pushed over because there's a crossbar right through there that supported the frame and kept it the exact right width and everything that it needed to be. Uh, and then it just from here moving forward, completely buckled and pinched. So the metal is extremely th like close to each other right here and then kind of curves out right there. So that's really bad. And then when we go look at the other side, it's a little bit easier to show you guys how, how pinched and kinked um, that is right there, going up to that cross support. And it's like ripping welds on the cross support out. It's ripping welds on the shock tower apart. Um, it's really, really bad. This truck hit something really, really hard. I think this is probably one of the best angles of that same side and how kinked it is. So to fix that, you really gotta be able to cut it, but then know that that shock tower is still sturdy and safe and everything like that, which it doesn't look like the welds are great on it. You have to be able to cut it, cap it, and re-extend it by either using OEM frame rail segments or um, you could tube frame it out, but that's too far back to be able to cut. We just can't cut it and get in there um, and make that work. I think the only, true way that we would feel comfortable building this and rebuilding this especially showing it on the channel or anything is uh getting a new frame which means kind of getting a new truck 
This one has a great power train, great power plant in it that runs really well. But the rest of the panels, as you can see, are kind of crap. Both the fenders are messed up, hood's messed up, front bumper's dead. The rear quarter panel has a lot of peeling paint. Uh, the interior is decent, but really it's just a powertrain that's the only valuable thing on this. So this leaves us in a pretty bad spot, and I, I really wasn't feeling smart at the end of the day yesterday. I felt like I wasted $14,000 and a whole day of my time. The goal for this was to be able to go get our trailer with our builds on it, and there's no way this is going to be doing it. So I went to Alternate Methods, reached out once again to in, on Instagram to find some fans. I think we found a rental truck, and we got our driver going to get that truck to go get our builds. Um, but we're still a f at least at minimum quite a few days out before those builds get transported back here. But that's okay. If they're on their way home, that's fine by me. We could all use a little bit of a vacation. Uh, but then we started thinking, what are we going to do with this truck? We could button it back up and send it to auction and just eat the losses. That happens. Not a big deal. We could sell it on Facebook Marketplace. We actually did list it and got a few people that were interested in it. But then we started thinking, like, if this truck has a great power plant, it's got the 6BT diesel, Cummins diesel in it that everybody loves so much. Like, should we, should we sell it? Should we get rid of it that fast? Should we let a good running diesel engine just slip through our fingers so fast? Or should we maybe take this opportunity <laughs> to diesel swap something? We have another red car. It doesn't have an engine. It matches the color coding. I think it was meant to be, guys. Oscar, grab the measuring tape. We're coming swapping the RX-7. Hi right, guys, fast forward a couple days from that last clip. Um, I am back here in Las Vegas. A little, little sooner than I wanted to be back in Las Vegas, but hey, it's a nice city. Things basically started getting a little bit out of hand with the, the transport of the vehicles from one you know, roadblock to the next to the next. We do think that we have a, uh, a truck that's gonna pick up the trailer and bring all the cars home, but I am here uh, because I didn't know that until this morning. Um, and basically I'm I'm getting in place in case we have to start moving them back one by one by one by renting um, like U-Hauls and trailers and stuff like that. Um, so I'm either here in Vegas babysitting or um, if all goes well, maybe uh, I'll be able to head back home soon. Um, but th this is really important that we get this figured out and um, and yes, come and swap in the RX-7 would be a really fun, <laughs> fun thing to do. Um, but also, I, you know, I just I recently saw this this amazing video of Rob Dom just screaming down a runway with his rotary revving out, you know, past like 10,000 RPM. And I really thought about how how badly I want to have that, just like a super high revving rotary engine in in a build. Um, so I talked with Rob, he still is planning on eventually producing engines. So I would love to be like the first Rob Dom customer and buy like the first Rob Dom engine. Um, so I don't think, the, the Cummins isn't going in the RX-7. It, it was very possible we actually spent another day <laughs> going down that road. Um, but yeah, it's not, I don't think I'm gonna choose to do that with my RX-7. Um, I was thinking maybe a Bentley Continental uh, GT would be really cool. When those things have engine problems, they go for really, really cheap at auction, and um, a lot of them have engine problems. So I thought that would be a really cool candidate. Or um, if we have more time, the truck is repairable if we just have enough time to pull the engine, rebuild the frame, and then put the engine back in. Um, so if, if we want to have the truck, it is it, the engine and powertrain is really nice. It's a nice truck, to be really honest with you guys. So. Uh, we will, and, and it's a super cool power plant. So we will keep the diesel around at minimum, uh, maybe even keep the whole truck. But what we need to do is I was taking a look at the calendar and we have this race with Chris Fix coming up. And I've seen a lot of your guys' comments about being um, frustrated with builds uh, getting interrupted and stuff like that, which I understand the frustrations there. And um, I'm not the type that, you know, doesn't finish builds or wants to string anything along or anything like that. So we're just staying focused. Step one, got to get my cars back. Um, and just to be honest with you, it made me a little uncomfortable, the idea of like making side content right now, just confusing people about what the heck's going on while I don't have my cars. So I just, just like, I just gotta go get my cars. Um, and I wanna be working on the Mustang. So I saw a lot of comments about the Mustang. We're not done with the Mustang. I mean, that was just a first test drive shakedown and a drag race. Uh, we know the powertrain and, and the system works very well. It's very fast. It, it, you know, it helped us out, figure out a lot of stuff. And, and now it's we're time to go like take that build to the finish line. Um, it's gonna be a very clean, very elegant, very cool looking car. And right now it's, you know, it's a, like, it's super cool looking, but it's not finished and we gotta finish it. So anyways, next episode, I'll be working on the Mustang. I'm gonna get my cars back home. 
um, however it takes. I mean, I could just go pull the Mustang off the trailer if I have to right now and drive it back home. So I'll get the cars back home. In the next episode, you'll see we will be working on the Mustang, probably deciding and, and starting to build whatever wide body um, kit and style of kit uh, we want to do. So that's the game plan. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode on the Mustang back home in our shop. Peace. Come, come, come on.